Hand tracking lets you drop the controllers and use your real hands to interact in your game. In this video, I will show you how to start developing hand tracking features in just a few steps in Unity with a MetaQuest headset. We will also take a look at some of the most impressive features, grab, poke, ray, hand pose, teleportation, micro gestures. And for today's video, I am super proud to say that we have a sponsor, Meta. Yep, you heard that right. If you want to go further with hand tracking and learn about the best practices, make sure to check out their latest blog post. The link is in the description. It's an awesome source of information where you will learn how Maestro use hand tracking to make movement feel natural when playing with an orchestra, how Drakair used gesture recognition for precise spell casting, and how one of my favorite hand tracking games, Waltz of the Wizard, made their experience feel unique with this feature. Okay, so big thanks to Meta for sponsoring this video and without further ado, let's get started with our tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Unity on a fresh new Unity project, but to save some time, as you can see, if I go to Windows, Package Manager, you can see that I've already downloaded the Meta XR all-in-one SDK that was able to add all of these packages inside this project. You can download the Meta XR all-in-one SDK directly on the Unity Asset Store for free, and once that down, make sure that your project is also set up for XR. To make sure that it is the case, let's go to Edit, Project Settings. And here, down below, if we click on XR Plugin Management, as you can see, we have Open XR set up for both Desktop and Android. And the last thing that we want to make sure is that if we click here on the Meta XR tab, this opens the Project Setup Tools. And here, make sure that everything on this checklist is verified for both Desktop and Android. Okay, now if we close our windows, now that our setup is correctly configured for XR, let's get started with the hand tracking setup. For this, let's select the main camera and press on delete to remove it. We can do the same for the global volume, which adds post-processing and remove it with the delete key. And now we are going to set up here the hand tracking features using Meta's building blocks. To open the building blocks, we can click here on Meta XR tools, building blocks. There we go, it opens this window. We can scroll down below and click here on all building blocks. And here you can have a look at all of the awesome features that you can simply drag and drop with your project. And thanks to the awesome building blocks, everything will be set up just for you. Now, the first building blocks that we want to add is here the camera rig directly. There you go. As you can see, the camera rig will add the OVR manager. And as a child, we can see the center eye and show, which will contain the camera of the player as well as some anchor for the left and right end. But if we click on play, as you can see, VR is moving. I can turn my head and I can see this beautiful skybox, but I cannot see the controllers or my hands. So let's see how we can fix this. If we leave play mode, we can go back to our building blocks, scroll down a little bit, and we should see here the controller tracking and hand tracking. So let's track them both inside our hierarchy. Okay, so as you can see, Adding these two building blocks will actually add here both controller tracking left and a hand tracking left under the left and ensure. For the hand tracking left, this game object contains some reference to track the hands of the player, but also to display it with the OVR mesh and the OVR mesh renderer. So let's find out how this looks by clicking on play. Okay, so as you can see, it works. I can see my controllers moving and animating when I move my hand. But if I leave my controllers on my desk and that I start using my hands, they now appear and I can see them moving in the game as well. That's awesome. Okay, so if I leave play mode, you know that adding these hand tracking bundle blocks has added here this game object, but it has also enabled hand tracking on the OVR manager. Because if we go here to the camera rig, we can see under the OVR manager, three very important settings for the hand tracking. The first one is the hand tracking support. This is where you can say that your application works for hands, controllers, or both. Then we have the hand tracking frequency, which you can set from low, high, or max. My advice is to set them to low when you can. And if your game needs to have fast motion, for example, for a fitness hand tracking game, then you can start to go from high to max frequency. And finally, for the end tracking version, make sure that this is set to V2, which I believe is way better than the first version. It's actually very impressive to me that they are improving further and further the end tracking capabilities, which is now very, very solid. But right now, with our current setup, we only have one issue. Well, we can actually see our ends, but we cannot interact with them. 
So to fix this, let's go back to our building blocks and scroll down below. And here we should see the interaction rig. And as the name suggests, the interaction rig will allow us to interact with hand tracking. So let's drag it in the hierarchy. Okay, so as you can see, the interaction rig has here this game object under the camera rig. And under this game object, we can see that we have some left and right interaction. And if we go under these interactors, we have different interaction for hands and no controllers, controllers and no hands, and controllers and hand together. And this kind of show you all of the interaction that are already available right now with our current setup. We have grab, ray, we can grab use, we have poke, and I will actually demonstrate all of these interactions very soon. But for now, I'm going to demonstrate them directly to you with two examples. The first one is a cube that we can grab, which can be directly set up with here the grab interaction if we drag it in the hierarchy. Okay, and for our second interaction, this one is not a building blocks, but can be found in the project folder here if we search for big red button. There you go. Make sure here that the search is set to all and that this little icon is unable. Otherwise, as you can see, you will not be able to see it. So anyway, now let's simply drag here this big red button over there. I'm going to reset its position to 0, 0, 0. And let's double click on it to zoom on this game object. There we go. We can see it. It's beautiful. And now I'm going to actually move both the grabable cube and the big red button half a meter up. So I will be able to read them more easily as this default position here is set to the ground. Now, anyway, as you can see, the cube here contains a grabable component. And under this cube, we have a hand grab interactable and a grab interactable. These two components will be able to fire the grab interactor to let us grab this cube. For the big red button, it is actually the same. As you can see on the button, we have a poke interactable, which will be able to speak to the poke interactor that we currently have to be able to poke this button. But let's find out how this looks by clicking on play. Okay, and as you can see, it works. We can interact now with our hands with both the big red button and the cube. That is so cool. And still, all of these interactions also work with the controller, as you can see. So everything looks good. And now with these very simple steps, we were able to add hand tracking features that also contains interaction. That is awesome. By the way, if you have a bug where you cannot actually see both of these objects, this is probably because here this locomotor is making the player false. So you can actually disable it to fix the problem. And now that we've learned about how to set up the hand tracking features and how to interact with it, let me show you some of the features that are unable through the example scene. To download the example scene, we can go to Windows, Package Manager, and here if you go to In Project and select the Meta XR Interaction SDK, you should see the example scene over there on these samples and you can simply download them by clicking on Import. There we go. If we close this window now, we can go to samples, meta XR interaction, the version that we have, example scene, and here are all of the example scene that we can look at. So let's start with the end grab example over there. Okay, so this scene demonstrates the end grab pose capability. When you grab an object, the default hand shape doesn't always look great, as you can see. So with the grapple system, you can define a custom hand shape and fold the hand into a specific pose when grabbing the object. Okay, so for example, check out this mug. The hand pose fits perfectly, but it also has different pose that will define the hand shape depending on where you grab it. It looks awesome. Okay, so for next example, let's open the comprehensive rig example over there. This is my favorite example scene. It puts all the interaction in one place. You already know about the grab and poke interactor, but here you will also find distance grab and ray interaction all using hand tracking. Okay, next let's go to the gesture recognition example, which is over there on the pose example scene. So, did you know that you can actually trigger action based on specific hand shape? It's surprisingly powerful and very easy to set up. This example scene shows simple gesture like paper and scissor, but you can build much more complex shape. Next, we have the concurrent hand controllers example over there. This feature will show you how you can actually use both controllers and hand tracking at the same time. So, this is one of the features that to me is very impressive and it is super underestimated. And finally, let's move on to the locomotion example. 
Wow, this is a big scene with a big environment, and this is because this scene features a solution on using hand tracking to move the player. Of course, with hand tracking, we have no button to push, so it's actually very tricky to move the player. But this example actually shows a great solution at this problem with a complete hand tracking teleportation system that uses micro gesture. Micro gesture is like the newest feature of hand tracking. It can detect subtle thumb move like taps or swipes. And as you can see, it is super precise and can be done for much more than teleportation. Like for example, with here, this character controllers that I just built with it. And there it is guys, you now have everything you need to get started with hand tracking in Unity. And you have an overview of all of the amazing hand tracking features. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it will help you on your project. If you want to go further, don't forget to check out Meta's blog post. The link is in the description. And you will also find documentation for each feature we talked about today, so you can keep exploring on your own. Of course, a big thanks to Meta for sponsoring this video and supporting my work. And thanks to you for watching till the end. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.